I'm very yeah. happy to be talking to you because I, your album is like one of my favorites of the year. I got to tell you, it's fantastic. And um, wow. well, it thank just you. seemed to come Thanks. out of nowhere. So um, thank you for that. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you. Um, the empty horse. And to me, I don't know how you feel about this, but, you know, I don't know. I assume that you, you're a Neil Young fan, and he's been releasing all his old archival stuff from the 70s, and this album kind of fits yeah. right. It could be one of those, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've always been a fan of, of Neil, and his early, you know, Harvest was one of my favorite albums, and um, everybody knows this is Nowhere, I think it was. And then uh, uh, Powder Finger. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I just really, really liked about it. I like his guitar. I even bought a, a Fender deluxe or put i may actually made a fender deluxe out of a kit right. because i knew that's the kind of amp that he uses so i built that last last winter and it was my first my first dive into doing electronics so yeah. i had some friends help me put it together but it's it was one of those things i wanted to do just pr probably because of him i mean that's yep, the yep. sound that he has i can listen to powder finger uh -huh. all day <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, i think i have studio, at times but, you know. <laughs> Uh -oh. so, so the uh, Empty Horses album has been out almost a month now, so a little time to reflect on yeah. it and see what other people think about it. And so the general consensus seems to be that it's, quote, unquote, an unexpected shift in style for, from you. Would you agree with that? Yeah. yeah. I would agree with it to a um, – yeah, I would agree with that. But I think a lot of it goes back to uh, – Moonflower Plastic when I started doing a lot of piano ballads and things that it was always an area I wanted to go into and um, I think on this album I just I just took the detour and did it and uh, I don't really think I, I intended to do it uh, but it just as the album came together it just it just went that way because I did that song Antietam 10 years ago oh right it just needed more I think it needed a a platform and I think I added that one almost towards the end after we had the album together I put Antietam in there and, and then uh, No Shame and that sort of just sort of finished the album off so I think it all it all just came together organically I think yeah and again No Shame I have a it kind of reminded me of the band and Richard Manuel in particular in, in the way that you presented right. yourself so <laughs> it's Everything has been fan goes of back band. to something else these days, it seems like. Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, I mean, and speaking of these days, I mean, um, the, the album begins with a very kind of ominous pia piano chord, and that kind of sets the tone for the album and for what's going on in the world today. Whereabouts are you, by the way? I'm in Leland, Michigan. Michigan, okay. So which that's is, uh, everything. <laughs> so... So uh, how, it's, we're way up north. We're up, we're up by Traverse City. So we're oh, not, okay. It's kind of the, at the top. So, it's, so you can get to Canada not, if you have to. It's a lot different than. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we're very close to Canada. Yeah, I'm sure you are. So, I mean, has, has the way that you, the album is being perceived changed with the stuff that's going on in the world at this point rather than when it was recorded? Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure how to compare it to today. I mean, I, there's, I just, with the civil war, I think, um, I, I look in terms of how, you know, the, the world seems so crazy today and how crazy it must've been then. I mean, the, yeah. uh, to have yeah. brother against brother and this, you know, the, the carnage that went on that, uh, kind of formed their nation, you know, it's just, times that we went through and we go through times again and the history will teach us things if we pay attention to it so um that wasn't my attention for the album right but uh it's just you know one of the things i i, I think about so right and so for folks here in new zealand uh the civil war obviously happened in the 1860s in the states the war against the, the and how how does that relate to the music that is on this record um how does the civil war yeah uh, i'm not sure what you well you you mentioned the civil well, war well there's i think there's three songs that, that are you know, antietam obviously is yeah uh 
on Golden Rivers is 1863, which would have been a year after Antietam. Uh-huh. And then No Shame, I think, is is kind of the the third in the trilogy of actual Civil War related songs. And then I think the other ones are just sort of, they work with those songs. They're not necessarily about Civil War. They're just about, uh, about people getting through their lives and trying to trying yeah. to redeem themselves or, or just hang in there. I mean, it's, it, life can be tough. So, um, I think that, I think that's reflected in the album. Yeah. Yeah. And of course it seems like the U S is kind of having to reevaluate and rethink of how they look at the civil war these days with all the Confederate stuff being torn down. Uh, right. Kind of interesting. But I mean, again, that's our history and the tyranny down is not going to get rid of it. it. It happened and, and we need to remember and, and learn from that. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, and the album also comes with a lot of poet paintings and stuff. Yeah, uh, which, which these days everything's digital, and that's you're kind of going against the grain there. So, tell us what you can expect, what people should expect if they actually get a hard copy of the thing. Um, there's ten. There's ten paintings in in the CD version. Uh, right. There's only the paintings on the front and back, but uh, all the uh, paintings I sent in, uh, Fire kind of put the whole thing together, and I think they did a good job taking the paintings and relating them to the song. So uh, I think the final, uh, the No Shame painting, I think, is the works the best. I mean, it just has that sort of sunset, ha- you know, life happens and there's a yeah. sunset to it, but... Uh, um, I think that I think the paintings relate really well with the with the songs, yeah. and and they weren't necessarily written for for the songs either. They were just right. the ones that I sent them to to use. So cool, cool. And how much time do you spend do you, painting as opposed to writing music and whatever? Is it, it kind of um, probably about half and half? Yeah. Uh, get up and decide what to do, and if I feel like painting, I'll paint. I feel like music, you know, I'll, I usually block off a week to write because it just takes some time to get into that mode. But, uh, um, and then it's probably in thirds because there's a third of the time that I don't do anything. I can't, you know, I'm not a machine. So you have to have a little time to, to re, re- regenerate and try to come up with something. So Right. And I think you're, Age-wise, you're similar to me. I'm 65. Um, uh, yeah, I'm 65. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of hard to get used you to. You look good for 65. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> I know. I had a hard time. I've got a filter. 50 didn't bother me. 40, you know. I got, <laughs> I got, I got to 60, and I was okay. And then 65 started creeping in. And it's, 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 I'm getting used to it now, though. I mean, right. So. Yeah. <laughs> But on the creative level, does does age have anything to do with it these days, or do you still think of yourself as eighteen or twenty one or whatever? <laughs> I still feel I feel as good as I did when I was you know forty, fifty. You know, I I still feel good, and I've got my health, and yeah. um, I think creatively, I'm still still out there working, and and don't want to have any need to slow down. It's just. I, I kind of take it more in stride these days than I used to, because I know, you know, I can just, when I want to do something, I can, I can generate that, that energy to do it. So right. um, I think that's one of the nice things about the age, you know, you know, you know a lot more and, and uh, it yeah. works for you. <laughs> You'd like to think so anyway. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. right. So the, the, the songs on the album, when, when was the process of recording them begun and when did all, all that happen? In what kind of environment? Um, it's been going on for about two years. I started the album in, after the tour in 2017 when we got back here and I started working these songs out. And uh, um, a lot of them, like Empty Horses and... Um, I noticed your 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 podcast is Thirteenth Floor Elevator. Yeah, <laughs> is that, the, the website is called the Thirteenth Floor. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, and uh, so I mean, I, I would sit. Th- sometimes I'd sit down, and, and when I did on Golden Rivers, 
I sat down and I thought, I, you know, I'm going to do something, a Rocky Erickson type of thing. And, oh, great. And, Can't uh, go wrong. I even, I was even, <laughs> so, you know, doing things like uh, Father, you know, the way he would sing things, uh, mm. Bless the Troops. And, and uh, I just was, sometimes I'll do things just to experiment. And, and it, uh, I'd go back in the next day and I'd listen to it. And, there's, you know, you'd find, well, there's something here, there's something there. And uh, that one just kind of hit me that I, I really like what I did there. And with the inspiration from Rocky and, and uh, just expanded on that and put together on Golden Rivers. And um, I kind of toned down my accent uh, a little bit on the, uh, the, the uh, playing around with it. But uh, that's kind of where that came. And then even Empty Horses was sort of a Johnny Cash thing. I was kind right. of thrown out there. And that kind of worked, too. So um, you still get inspirations from all these things that you learned growing up. I mean, Johnny Cash was one of my favorites and then Drocky Erickson. So, I mean, it's, you take a little bit of this and a little bit of that and, and there you are. They're good sources to draw from both of them. I have to say. Right. Yeah, Coming from very yeah, different very places. So. Yeah. And you mentioned empty horses and there's a certain amount of like religious uh, um, imagery or allusions to it throughout some of the songs. Um, why is that important to put in there? Um, I kind of missed you. Kind of broke up there. I oh, sorry. The question. There, there, there are some religious um, references, like uh, still has his hands on the Bible and the Holy Ghost and all that stuff. So I was just wondering yeah. uh, why, why you think that's important to be part of what you're doing these days. Um, I've always been. I've, I believe. I have uh, always believed, and I think it has a lot to do with people's lives. They look for something that's bigger than themselves and right. um, they ask questions. And uh, on a lot of the places they're asking questions. They, does God need me? Is God there? Or, uh, is there reasons for this? Is there reasons why there's wars or, uh, and do we need to go forward with this? It, it's, it's one of the things that's always been in my life. And, uh, I think uh, I just wanted to bring it out. It just, well, I didn't want to bring it out. It just came out when I was writing the songs that, you know, a lot of people have questions. Hmm. That's for sure. Especially these days. Seems like, <laughs> yeah. Well, it, I, I, it seems like a lot of people think they have the answers is the problem. <laughs> yeah. That's, They're not listening so. to anybody else. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how are you feeling about uh, the elections and all that stuff? Do you have any opinions about that stuff? Is it affecting you? On a um, I, I, I don't know. I, I think everybody's thinking what they want to think, and yeah, I they, try to stay out ideas. of the politics. So. Yeah. So I'm assuming these songs were written a little while ago because the record's been out now for a bit. Uh, have you been uh, being writing more since then? Has it? Has the reaction to this album affected what you might do in the future? Yeah, I, I kind of still want to go this this area. Uh, kind of, I've opened a new door, and I want to keep going that way. I, I've uh, when I was writing it, uh, there was a lot of songs that were left off. It, it felt ah. like there was two albums at the same time, so I stripped away a lot of the songs that didn't work. So I've, I'll be releasing those and some a couple a single in January, and then. There's some other ones that I'm going to be releasing shortly after that. And then it, we're always writing and uh, uh, we're going to be working on another album uh, here pretty soon. So there's a lot of things in the work and a lot of those left off songs are going to be coming out eventually. Uh, you, you'll just be recreating, Neil. You'll, you'll have your own archive series soon enough. <laughs> right. yeah. uh -huh. he, he seems to be... Uh, an endless supply of, of old stuff from the seventies. It's coming out. Yeah. It's great. Uh, <laughs> Can't complain though. Um, and, right. and of course everybody knows you from guided by voices. Is there anything happening on that front as well? Uh, not that I know of. Uh, no, there isn't. I mean, everybody's off the road pretty much. Yeah. And uh, we hope to do some shows in January. Uh, we've got a couple, about four shows lined up, and we'll see how those go. And if they go well, then hopefully we can do some more. But we'll just have to see what happens. I don't know what, what the clubs and how many people are going to show up. And yeah. So, uh, 
It's a wait and see situation. <laughs> That's for sure, man. I've never seen anything like this. So, um, it's yeah. just kind of uh, opened up here. We're back to normal, whatever that is these days uh, here in New Zealand. Yeah. Well, I've always wanted to get to New Zealand, New oh, Zealand, and Australia, been. and, and uh, that way. no, I haven't. Um, we were going to go uh, right after my uh, my daughter or my son was born, and uh, I left the band. Uh, guided by voices went, but I didn't go with them. They went to New Zealand and uh, Japan, and some other right. places, but I did. I didn't get a chance to go. With them, so, yeah, okay. Hopefully, so, someday. Yeah. yeah. So you got You say you got a, a single or a song coming out in January. Uh, looking forward to any yeah. more than that, or what? <laughs> no, there'll be there'll be more after yeah. that. Yeah, we've got. Uh, and like I said, another album and then uh, some more singles that were left off of the album we're going to be releasing. Right, right. Soon. And, and you're affiliated with Fire Records now. They seem to be quite the label. It's right. doing a lot of cool stuff. Uh, does that have much effect on your creativity and how you deal with the music business in general when you have somebody like that, that that's looking out for you? Uh, I think they're doing a really good job promoting the album. And... Uh, I'm I'm really happy with them right now. So uh, this is the first my first album with them. So, but they're yeah, they, I'm really happy with Fire. They're they're a really nice label and uh, seem to be doing a good job. Cool. All righty. Well, I'll let you go. Thank you very much for talking to me. Good luck with things happening okay, up. Thank you, Marty. There. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll see what happens next, and ho hopefully at some point you can come down to New Zealand and play some songs for us. It'd be great. I hope so. I hope so. I hope I can do that pretty soon. <laughs> Have a good day. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks, Mark. Yep. Bye.